What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. So we have something quite different uh, for you guys this time. Um, see, when I got it through the post, uh, and I opened it up and I saw the very first thing and the very thing that I saw was Blackberry. And I was like, oh crikey, uh, Blackberry, okay. I haven't really seen anything interesting or exciting from them recently. And if I must be honest, I'll let you guys into a little secret. Even back 10 years ago when they were the phone to have, I wasn't the biggest fan of them because I just couldn't get along with their keyboard. But however, I was quite intrigued by this one. Blackberry, with an Android operating system running behind. Let's go and check it out. So first things first, I guess we always go through the device itself and how it looks and how it feels. And honestly, it feels great. Visually, I'm actually very impressed. The, the whole aluminium body with the plastic indentation in the back that makes it look like leather, makes it look very premium. And it is indeed very premium. It feels very well built. If we look around on the right of the device itself, you have the micro SD card and SIM card tray, followed by the volume rocker. And then you'd think is a power button, but actually that's not, that's a convenient key, convenience key, which by the way, uh, really nice. You can map whatever you want to it. Perfect. On the far left -hand side of the phone itself, you have one key and of course that's the power key. Now, this for me is a little bit backwards. I'm right-handed, so I'm always gonna pick up my phone with my right hand, so the power button is in the wrong place. If you're left-handed, it's about perfect, I think. At the bottom of the device, you have two grills. One is for the microphone, the other one is for a speaker, so it's a mono speaker. A USB Type-C, yes, with fast charging, and you get about 50% in about 30 odd minutes uh, of charge, which is really quite handy. At the very top, guess what? Yes, we do have a headphone jack and a microphone and nothing else at the top. It looks a bit empty, personally. Uh, you have the sensors and a micro LED on the front, but overall, it looks really premium like it so when you look at the screen itself uh i'd love to say to you guys it's a standout feature but it really kind of isn't it's only a 4.5 inch screen with a resolution of 1620 by 1080 so it's a just shy of a full resolution screen and of course they are making good use of it given the fact they're giving you this keyboard but in, when you put the phone landscape because of the awkward resolution that it is you always end up with black lines across the top and bottom it just the OS doesn't scale it correctly for the screen which is a little bit of a disappointing also the screen lacks a little bit on brightness in my opinion um, however you know it's detailed enough with that resolution would have just preferred to be a little bit bigger personally in terms of performance well I even feel a little bit awkward talking about performance in 2017 I can't really think of many mobile devices nowadays that actually you'd struggle with performance. And this is this is the same thing. I mean, this is running a um, Snapdragon 625, to exactly, not exactly top of the range when you think of 835s and all that stuff on the flagship phones. Three gig of RAM and 32 gig of internal storage. Of course, you can expand that to with a uh, micro SD card up to 256. In India, however, you do get a 64 uh, internal storage and a four gig of RAM. Uh, version I'm not sure why they haven't expanded that to the rest of the world which might have helped quite a bit with performance generally speaking i found that is fine it's whenever you try to do a little bit of a search on the device because you can do a search straight from the front of the front screen of the device you do get this little hesitation every now and then which kind of reminiscence what android used to be of yesteryear of course that doesn't happen on premium devices anymore with android but it just i don't know it just gives it a little bit of a pause and it kind of just makes it feel a little bit sluggish occasionally however overall it's not exactly a problem um, one of the standout features on this handset though it's exactly what I think they hit the nail on the head with with the battery itself with a 3500 milliampere amp battery this thing can go on and on and on I mean we're talking about easily two days battery I, I mean I've managed to get more than two days simply because I don't use it quite as heavily as I normally as I would think uh, the battery itself is really good and also the optimization that BlackBerry did to Android and having the fact that it's got Android Nougat 7.1.1 which is the latest 
which also indicates that we're going to get regular updates with this device. It's actually really refreshing. Really, really good. I'm really impressed with the battery life on this. The other thing I'd like to say is this isn't designed as a multimeter handset. As I mentioned already on my screen thing, the screen is small, it's not the brightest, and the aspect ratio on it doesn't really work that well. Which kind of leads me on to the speaker itself. Single speaker, it sounds tinny and it sounds like the audio is coming out forced. It's being forced audio. It doesn't sound as full or as clear as say a, a year old iPhone or a couple of years old iPhone to be fair with you. Mind you, given that it's probably gonna be on similar price ranges. Um, the other standout feature I'd say on this would be, and no, it's not the camera. Although the camera is really good and it's got exactly the same sensor as a Google Pixel, um, it does do great pictures in daytime and stuff like that. However, it, it's, it lacks a little bit on the speed of focusing. It hasn't got HDR+, Plus, which is one of the things that the Google Pixel really stands out with. It kind of really sharpens and, and improves the pictures massively. But it, it does stand on its own and it does do a very good job. Video itself, it hasn't got uh, optical image stabilization, so it kind of struggles to stabilize the video. But it's got... Um, digital image stabilization, which does a good job. And you can run it and record up to 4K. However, on my particular handset, it wouldn't let me set it to 4K. I'm not too sure why, but um, it was good. The front-facing camera is respectable, so you're gonna be doing half-decent selfies. The angle itself, the field of view, in my opinion, is not wide enough. I think this is a problem of most selfie cameras on phones nowadays. It's a selfie camera, and you can barely get people in you know, a big, wide-angle camera on there. That's what you need. Um, so it doesn't really work that well, but however, it stands out. But let me stress to you guys that this handset isn't your iPhone replacing device. This handset isn't your Galaxy S8 replacing device. This is for someone who is professional, someone who wants to get work done. You know, you wanna be doing emails, you wanna be responding. This is a business device. And as Blackberries have always been, Blackberries have always been a business device, except for the BBM, which, if I'll be honest with you guys, I don't really have any of my friends on it anymore. Has anyone know anyone on BBM anymore? Blackberry, my bit of advice to you is just give up on the BBM thing. It doesn't work. We got WhatsApp. You know, in, you know, Instagram is doing messaging. Everybody's doing messaging. Who, who who needs BBM anymore? Certainly not us. But if you then look at what this is designed for and look at its standout feature, which in my opinion is two things. The sheer customization that you have on this. I mean, when you look at the keyboard, we have probably 30 keys or 20 keys, whatever it is, the keyboard. Every single key can be assigned to open an app. But hold up a thing, not just one app. You could do this to open two apps by short pressing or quick pressing, and this will open any app. Smart thing as well they did is they, they put in a finger, fingerprint scanner on the space bar, which in my opinion, that's smart. That's good use of space. Even though they haven't offered you th other stuff that other mobile phones do, which is wireless charging, which would have explained why they have the plastic back, but they don't have, I mean, they could have fitted it on a nine millimeter thick phone, but they didn't. So personally, the keyboard is exactly, it's touch capacity everywhere. So you could use it as a scroll to scroll through menus and all of that stuff. Uh, be careful when you're scrolling up because actually I ended up hitting the home button several times when you're scrolling up. The fingerprint sensor is fast when it's reading. I couldn't, however, get used to the keyboard. I just couldn't type quick enough on it. it being so used to a touch screen, I, my fingers being so big, I found myself with exactly the same problem that I had back in the day, which is, I just can't type on a physical keyboard this small. It just doesn't work for me. Um, but I have to admire them for what they've done, putting a fingerprint sensor on the space bar, putting you know, touch capacitive on every single key. The fact that you can customize every single key for something different. I have to admire them for that. And I think that that is a very good standout feature. And I reckon if you do work on it hard enough, I guess you could get pretty fast and accurate with the keyboard, but it's just not for me. So how do I feel about this? Now, having looked at the actual device itself, love the build quality, don't really like the keyboard. Uh, I, I just 
feel so cheated that a, such a beautiful looking device, in my opinion, actually has got all that keyboard there. I would have preferred it not having that. I think it would have been far better. I love the fact it looks professional. It looks, it means business. And it weighs a fair amount as well. I think it's 180 odd grams, which is exactly the right way for advice that feels like it feels strong um, it, however I have to break it down to you guys honestly unless you really 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 like Blackberry or really 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 need a physical keyboard I'm not really sure why you'd buy this device however if you do need either of the two it doesn't get better for business with those two assets, it really doesn't get better. So in my opinion, even though the phone is not for me, it's a thumbs up. 